So that's uh, nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. Very, it's very nice of you to come here. Mm -hmm. you, you are the, um, the chairman of uh, Yaskawa Electric. Yep. You're also uh, in charge of the International uh, Federation of Robotics. Mm -hmm. um, where do we stand uh, in terms of industrial robotics, uh, the market in 2019 and 2020? Mm -hmm. You two big clients for years yes. have been the automotive industry and the electronic industry, mm -hmm. and we have bad signals from those two uh, mm -hmm. two groups mm -hmm. of uh, mm -hmm. customer, corporate customers. So, how do you see the sales improving or going down in 2020? What's your what's your view on that? Definitely, it's going up, and uh, the the reason is the automobile industry. Uh, employs robotics for their production and then one for expansion of their cap capacity and the other one is for changing their models and then they, they constantly consistently changing their models they're adding models because of uh, EV coming uh, plug-in EV are coming so there are more models coming mm -hmm. so we definitely believe that uh, automobile will come back soon and uh, when it comes to electronics, uh, naturally semiconductor re are required for 5G era, mm -hmm. lots of data. And uh, data will increase maybe 10 times in 10 years at least. So we need capacity to stock data and then semiconductor will perform a lot, big mm. portion for that purpose. And and devices, when it comes to smartphone, that was the biggest driver for mm. years uh, to uh, use robots for the manufacturing mm. sector. And uh, last year was not the big year. Mm. And maybe because of 5G coming, uh, lots of uh, new technology should be in, in, inside the smartphone or devices. So we believe that we'll come back soon again. If we focus on the Japanese market, mm -hmm. uh, the level of penetration of robots is still not at the level of Korea or Singapore, mm -hmm. but it's already yeah, big. Yeah. How, how is it moving? I see a lot of progress in industrial robotics in all the factories here, but in terms of service, we have those fun experience <laughs> like paper from SoftBank oh, or yeah, stuff yeah. like that. But is it picking up, do you see, or is it too early? Or do we, don't we have the right solution at the moment in terms of service robot in Japan? Uh, when, it, when you think of uh, robotics, uh, maybe we better think of robotics from the usage point of view, what we want to do. So if we, we, if we want to be guided at the hotel, what kind of uh, tools do we want to have? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not uh, a robot. <laughs> we want human being to guide mm -hmm. us. So maybe if we start to think of things from the point of what we want to do and what it will be the tool, then we will see what we want. Maybe, say, if you think of drone, mm. we can think of many things we can do with that mm. robot. So, but when it comes to guidance robot, <laughs> this is a guidance robot. Mm. You, they already named it as a robot. But uh, if you have tools as a robot, then we're going to have a different uh, expansion mm. of the application. But when it comes to service robot, if you interact with human being, I don't expect a lot in that area. Even in, uh, with the aging society, you don't, do you think that robots could help in healthcare center? Or, because there's so many attempts here in Japan and investment by the government to try to push that in some hospitals or do you think it's going to be still marginal for many years? I don't know if you can call it a robot but maybe there will be a sm more tools to help those mm. uh, el aged people. Mm. So if we start to think of the tool from the robot side mm -hmm. you're going to make mistake. We don't want to make that kind of mistake so we want to start with what they have to, to be, how they have to be treated mm. and then different tools should be more feasible and eligible and robot can do this portion but maybe portion of robot I would think is very small okay. in that area as well. A little word on um, the Chinese market mm -hmm. and Chinese player 
they yeah. are going fast. Mm -hmm. There was yes. a big step up once they managed to buy KUKA, for example, and KUKA <laughs> Technologies. Oh, yes. oh, yeah. So where do we stand now? Are they a competitor for a group like Yaskawa uh, Electric or for Fanuk, the, the two big Japanese leaders? Are they here yet, or do you think they will, you will encounter them on other markets soon? Uh, so we don't take uh, China as a country a competitor. But KUKA is a competitor. Mm. So with the technology mm. and experience, they can be a competitor. But uh, as a company of China, there are so many manufacturers, but they are not yet competitors because they don't have, they have a good technology, but not good enough for the users to apply to their production yet. So maybe it may take a long time for the users to, I mean, for the manu Chinese manufacturers to gain real, uh, uh, say trust from the users mm -hmm. and uh, complaint from the ma Chinese manufacturers to me as a uh, chairman of uh, International Federation of Robotics is that um, mm. we, do, we, we do promote robotics in China mm. with them but customers buy from uh, falling manufacturers okay. including KUKA <laughs> so they will catch up but uh, it, take, it will take a long time. And then robotics itself is not a technology, but uh, how to use robotics is mm. another technology. That's a bigger portion, mm. in action. So it will take time. Thank you very much. Thank you.